Let's do this. First shot of the film. All right, quiet, everybody. The shot of the day. Go there the goes the Go cherry. Okay. That's fine. Either way. Wow. Yay! First shot on the celebrant. Oh, boy. Pressure. Let's do our rolling sound. Spencer, we're rolling on sound on this, right? Sounds beats. Oh. Is it played in? No. Okay, great. All right. Sounds, Sounds rolling. Roll Down again. speed and camera speed. Five, please. Call it. Seeing that five, take one, mark. And action. Oh, hold on. And, <laughs> action. and camera is set. All right. Action tip. I was almost killed today, Frank. Because I'm an arrogant beginner. A beginner who has no business in the business of spirituality. All I can offer anyone is a crap wedding because it's bullshit. I am so full of bullshit. Whoa, what? Norma. Ah, Norma. Breathe, you. Hi, my name is Ray Don Chong, and I am the writer, director, creator of The Celebrant. The Celebrant is a pilot, a television series that I wrote um, following the life and adventures of um, Sheila. I live on a farm that is a working nursery in the seacoast of New Hampshire. Um, I'm single, uh, divorced, I have no children. I, um, it's not a volunteer, I get paid to be a celebrant, but what is a celebrant? A celebrant is a woman or a person who creates ceremony, whether it's a wedding, uh, a christening, or create ceremony um, for a funeral. Um, and sometimes celebrants are called to moderate or mediate a, a situation. In the beginning, the first episode uh, of The Celebrant, I uh, moderate a, uh, excuse me, I witness a woman who decides to, uh, who's catastrophically ill, and she decides to euthanize herself, to kill herself. And it's illegal here in New Hampshire, so I am a witness to a crime. Um, but as a celebrant, I feel that it is my spiritual duty to, to facilitate this or uh, witness her and, um, and I hold the divine, I hold the divinity uh, around what she's doing because I think that, that as a person, as, a, as an individual, as Sheila, that people who are catastrophically ill and there is no other alternative um, and they decide they don't want to be a financial burden, I think that we should be allowed to do this. And I'm willing, as the character, and maybe even as Ray Don John, I'm willing to break the law. So why did I do? Why, why did I do the celebrant? Why did I even think it was a good idea? Um, for one thing, I think spiritual content uh, is needed on television, um, and not in a necessarily Judeo-Christian way. I like the idea that as as Sheila, I present grand, big concepts without it being uh, smothered or smeared with dogma or any kind of religious um, hooey. Although, I'm not not spiritual. So I feel like as the character and as myself individually, I believe in God. I believe in the story of, of Jesus. I believe in the story of, of Allah. I believe in, in, in the fact that there was a guy named Muhammad. I believe that there is a Buddha. And, so as, as, as a celebrant, one of the joys is that I get to, to merge and traverse these different beliefs without having to own them or to say this is the only path. And I think that that's a sexy, interesting character um, to bring to, 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 the, to the world weekly. Someone who has to traverse through not only these modalities of religion but also you know, nature and maybe you could call it Wiccan or Pagan, but things that are spiritual and deep and divine but aren't religious, and I think that's fascinating. So I decided that I would, I would be a celebrant in the, in the series so that I could do that, so that I would have the um, permission to be spiritual without being religious. Um, and I think that there's, I, I think that there's a validity of being an atheist. I, I understand, I know atheists, I understand agnostic and atheistic thinking, and I, I think that that's as valuable as someone who's deeply, deeply, deeply religious. Um, and I can embrace, as a celebrant, I can embrace the deeply, deeply religious. So, does that mean I'm a friend to everyone? Yes, it does. Um, Did you reveal? Did you want to do that next while it's the middle of the day? Well, absolutely, and it's the one where there's, we're going to, we're going to... a few lines. Okay. And 
Erica. Erica. I'm Ben Heald. I'm the director of photography for uh, this project. Um, I operate the camera, coordinate with my man Bert for lighting, and we kind of design the overall look of the film. Um, or the, the show, I think. Oh, no, no. I like the back of the BG stuff here. I think that's what I like. Um, I think Sheila, my character, is an imperfect, deeply flawed woman who is looking for God, and me, Ray Don, the actor, I'm looking for God. I'm always looking for God. And I think, um, I think that a lot of us out in the real world are looking for the divine and looking for proof that there is something bigger than us that might be more intelligent and all-encompassing omnipotent, omnipotent, supreme. Um, and I think that that's an interesting struggle. And I think as Sheila, my imperfection and my, my path of trying to find my way, um, I think it resonates. And I'm a woman of age, I'm a woman of color, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not common, but I feel like I'm very common, very much so. And I also think it's time for television to, um, to uh, get, become more mature, <laughs> without being like the Golden Girls. Just, we need something in the middle. First of all, I wrote the script. I wrote the script a couple years ago, um, and it turned out not bad. I had taken a vacation to Maui um, and was hanging out with the Breaking Bad people, the people Vince Gilligan and Michelle McLaren and Melissa Bernstein, and they inspired me to um, want to do a series. And I thought, well, I want to do a series, but I want to do a show that's about, obviously, a woman of a certain age and somebody who's, who's me, um, but who also is, like I said, spiritual. So I decided to write the script, and I wrote the script, and the script turned out not bad. So what was the next step? Well, I knew that if I pitched this, Hollywood wouldn't buy it because there's no show on the air like it. I couldn't reference it and say, you know, it is like Touched by an Angel, but not Christian, uh, although it is spiritual. Hello. So I crowdfunded it. I crowdfunded it on Indiegogo, and I raised um, enough money to um, get it going. Um, I raised $16,000. I was asking for twenty-five, dollars um, and then I gap-funded with some investors the remaining um, amount, so I do. I, I did it for twenty five thousand dollars, a little bit more, maybe twenty eight, um, and that was enough to shoot it. Walk the film a little bit more. As soon as we got away, I should have taken us both to the hospital, and I didn't. I waited too long. Where would I? Be? I don't know. I haven't died yet. So my name's Daryl Larson. I'm actually playing Officer Tim uh, in the little town here in New Hampshire that the place, the, the thing takes place. But actually, I'm an old friend of Ray Don's. We worked together 30 years ago, and I would do anything for her. So I came up here, and, and I'm an uh, all-purpose uh, uh, player. I'll do anything they want me to do. Plus, I'll play uh, uh, Officer Tim when it comes along. Uh, not I'm worried about school. putting the post outside. Let's get rid of this. Sort of crap. So, um, and then I've just got like each individual so I cast locally, um, and I also cast outside of our local area. I have to say something that I am so proud of the actors that I cast that are locals. I have Doria uh, Bramante, um, Paul Belfield, he came in today. I have um, a beautiful... Uh, Doria plays Norma. She plays a really big part, and she's just exquisite. She comes from theater. She's a member of Screen Actors Guild. I did go SAG Signatory, which was pretty exciting. First time in my career that, as a producer and director that I went SAG. I, I had I'd never really... I didn't do it for my first uh, feature, um, but this one I did, and um, it was pretty exciting. Who else did I have? I have um, Adam Tran and Amy Hayes, who are from Indiana. I know them from DePaul University. I did a short film this um, summer called Mud Lotus, and Adam played the Buddhist monk, mm, and he was excellent. So he came up here and did a two-day arc. He plays JD. He's a hunk. He's the Asian Elvis. He plays JD, uh, my lawyer, in the show, and he's excellent. Um, Amy Hayes plays Mrs. Um, Samuelson. She's the rich, very Christian mother of a wedding, 
and uh, I cast the multi-talented, incredibly funny Ruth Sullivan as Missy. She, she hails out of New York, but she's a mass girl. She's from Massachusetts. I have uh, Sean Murphy, who is the most adorable uh, actor. He plays Henry the Atheist, and he is from Brooklyn. Oh my God, my big star of my show is Tim Reed, the Tim Reed from WKRP, Frank's Place, Snoops. He's he plays Frank. I didn't I, I didn't realize Frank and Frank's Place, but anyway, Tim Reed is the big get of my show, and he is he steals the show basically. He plays a, a very pivotal role. He's a series regular. He plays Frank, and Frank is special. And uh, we have an incredible relationship. I'm not going to give it away because to tell you everything about it would ruin one of the reveals of the show. Um, but I was lucky. And how did I find Tim Reed? I found Tim Reed. Um, we connected because he donated to the campaign. Um, and then I had another actor uh, set for the role. And he, I couldn't close the deal. And I went out to Tim Reed. I had his information from Facebook and from my campaign. And I begged him to do the part. He said yes. Ray Dawn and I corresponded on LinkedIn, and, and um, she was doing her uh, funding, fundraising, and um, I saw it, and made a little donation, and we connected, and then I get a call from her saying, would you like to be in the, in the uh, piece? You know, one of those simple things, people reaching out, you know, connected. I worked with her father a few years back on a series, the seven show, so I always felt there was a connection with the I'm playing Frank, which is sort of a you know, sort of a muse, a mystical muse uh, that interacts with her life, and on a very unusual and sort of ethereal plane. To say the least. No, I'm, I'm looking forward uh, um, for this to be um, successful. I think uh, Ray has a wonderful project here. She certainly put her passion into it, and um, I'm certainly um, supporting her as best I can. I, I have to tell you, star in something, direct as well as produce, is really rough. <laughs> and I wouldn't recommend it. No, I think you have to pick. I think I would take off one of the hats, and it might, it might be. Um, I love directing it, but I did feel a little bit like, camera wise, you can tell that I'm a little exhausted. <laughs> There's a couple scenes where I could be a little bit prettier. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to partnering up with. Uh, I would love, of course, Amy. AMC, um, I don't know that it's an AMC show, but I think a &E, Lifetime, I would like a network to partner me, um, or any of the, I don't, you know, right now television's morphing and changing, and, you know, I would say, of course you want ABC, CBS, um, NBC, but the thing is, is I don't know that I would have the freedom uh, with a regular network that I would maybe have with a cable network. Um, as an artist, as a producer, as a writer, and as a star, it's really nice to work at home, to work here in New Hampshire. I love the locations, I love the people. I think we have a really good uh, collection of crew to pick from. So I, you know, I would love to sell the show, obviously, and, and, but I would like a partnership. Um, somebody would come in and I would still be able to have a lot of the, the duties. We would be able to crew up and have a lot of, you know, of course, creative freedom. <laughs> um, so I would take less of a financial, um, I would take less money if it meant we could have more control. The exact color scheme, though. We'll get away with it. No! The first one. I just let you go, so not able. My name's Bert, uh, and I'm the gaffer. Uh, right now, we're doing a morning shot, and I don't really have anything to do because everything just lights itself. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like that. I didn't make it look so slightly closer. Oh, I love this. It's like, it's, a, it's fantastic. The other thing about the celebrant that I think is interesting is that every week we have three, I have three clients that, that come into my life. And what's interesting about being a witness, as a celebrant I'm a witness, is that I get to really showcase the human condition. Um, Unlike a doctor, but similar to a doctor. Unlike a cop, but similar to a cop. I get to be in people's lives in a really intimate way um, without being a cop, a doctor, or a therapist. And I, f I find that refreshing. Um, and, you know, as, as human beings, we're very fascinating. I think that, that we're, we're, I think we're fascinating. I think we're worthy of, of more examination every week. I mean, I look forward to showing you the show. I hope you like it. Um, 
I can't think of anything. I feel a little bit brain dead at the moment. Um, would you ask me what would I? Do? What would be my highest dream? I would like the show to be an, an, an enormous success. I would like people. I mean, I don't mind when people say the show's like touched by an angel. The one thing is with Sheila, and I hope I, I succeeded, is that I don't want her to be special, because I want her to be special in that you want, you know, I'm able to to help people create ceremony. I actually do a few, you know, celebrate things in the show, but I don't necessarily think. Um, and I could be, it could be a flaw, but I don't think she's an angel. I'm not an angel. <laughs> I'm not an angel at all. Um, and I think that that makes her special. I'm very ordinary. And I think that makes Sheila special. So, Working on the show was excellent. We, we, we got a lot of gifts. I want to tell you, we got a lot of help. Um, not only did we have our little budget, but I would say that I got in-kind donations that, you know, whether it was locations that were not charged for, we were given um, a hotel room for Tim that was we were not charged for, and I couldn't have done it without the complete support of New Hampshire. And I have to tell you, shooting here is magnificent, and all the people that did donate, whether it was CJ buses, um, the Sheridan, I mean, I just owe them everything for letting me do this, and I really hope they like what I pulled put together, because they, um, without them I couldn't have done it. So. Um, I am deeply grateful. It's a good spot, and people are really good here. So it was a, just for that, it was an excellent experience. No, he wasn't rude. He's just upset. And if he wants to blame me, it's okay. It's part of my job. Okay. Glasses? Yeah. He's behind you. Thank you. Nice touch. you know, Yvonne, I love you. <laughs> Thank you for starting me up. Because God knows I would have walked in with my goobery glasses on. Depending on what we're not supposed to see, there's a hot spot in my eye. Oh, if we're not supposed to see it, then. Quiet on set, please! Quiet in the kitchen, guys! Yeah. <laughs> Action. Just in time. I'm Spencer. Spencer Cadigan. Uh, I'm the, uh, I'm the sound man. So, uh, Basically, uh, I uh, have I have a guy helping me out. He's on boom. That's John. He, uh, he holds up the mic, points it in the right direction, makes sure that it's close enough to the people who are speaking, and we get as good audio as we can. No. Breathe, Sheila. Breathe. You knew her? Yeah, my father was a pastor at a popular church. Fund was all of them, a strict bunch. Man had problems, had drinking problems. Yeah. Yeah, to go to that grill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're saying when we're, we're going to be on you and we just hear Frank say dinner ready. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's do it. Oh, we're so excited. We can't. We should just get ready to shoot. So right, we're so waiting for a floppy. Uh, hey, Frank. I went to TC's. Hey, come see what I've done. Okay, let me get dinner started. I'll check my messages and I'll be right back. Hey, little fella. How is the great sir? 